Hey guys, Mr. Smith, Sandite Mentor here again. Um, let's play with uh, multiplying fractions a little bit more. Um, let's take this one. 5 over 6 times 15. Okay, take a look at this. The first thing I need to do is to make 15 into a fraction, a whole number. If you're given a whole number, just put it over 1 and then it turns into a fraction. So that's the same thing as saying 5, 6 times 15 over 1. Okay, now let's use the cross simplified trick, see if there's anything common going diagonally. Um, 6 and 15, uh, the greatest common factor between those two. Um, 3 will go into both of them. 3 will go into 6 and make that to a 2. 3 will go into 15 and change that into a 5. Um, and that's pretty much it. Then multiply straight across. 5 times 5 is 25. 2 times 1 is 2. Now, we ended up with an improper fraction and we, we're not finished. Um, improper fraction, this top number is larger than the bottom number. The way to change that is that we have to divide. So reading from top to bottom, that's the same thing as saying 25 divided by 2. 2 will go into 2 one time. 1 times 2 is 2 and then you subtract and you have 0. Now you're ready to bring down the 5. 2 will go into 5 2 times. Okay. 2 times 2 is 4 and you subtract and you have 1. Okay. Whenever you have a remainder, the remainder is going to go on the top and this number here that you divided by is going to stay on the bottom. So the answer to 5, 6 times 15 equals 12 and 1 half. A little bit confusing, a couple more steps that we had to go through, um, but, um, uh, but that's okay. We, we got there. Let's, let's try another one and see if it ends up the same, same way. Let's say that we have three eighths, um, and let's do three eighths by uh, 11, okay? That's the same thing as saying three eighths times 11 over one. Look for anything common uh, greatest common factor. There's nothing common here, so we're just going to have to multiply straight across. 3 times 11 is 33, and then 8 times 1 is 8. Okay? That's improper because the top number is bigger than the bottom number, so we're going to have to divide 33 divided by 8. Okay? Now you can go ahead and set this fraction up if you want to. You know it's going to have a fraction bar and you know for a fact that the 8 is going to be on the bottom. Okay. Now your whole number is going to go out front here. So how many times will 8 go into 33? Well, 8 times 4 is 32. So. 8 will go into 33 four times, so your whole number will go out here in front. And then after you subtract 32 from 33, you have a remainder of 1. The remainder goes up on top. Okay? So the whole number, how many times did 8 go into 33? As your whole number goes in front, the 8, the number of times you divided into, goes on the bottom. The remainder is the numerator, which goes on top. So if we look at this, 3 eighths times 11 actually equals 
four and one eighth. And um, I don't. That's about the easiest way I know to uh, to do one. Let's just do an extra one. I'll throw this one in for free. Um, two thirds, um, and let's do times four. Okay. So if we do times four, I'll go ahead and put it down as a fraction four over one. Look for common factors. Diagonally, there's not. So I just multiply straight across. Two times four is eight. Three times one is three. Okay. Reading from top to bottom, that line means to divide. So that's eight divided by three. Okay. I go ahead and set this up over here if I want to. I know the three is going to be on the bottom. The whole number, however many times three will go into eight, it'll go two times, right? We'll go out front because two times three is six. You subtract six from eight, you get two. The remainder goes on top. Okay? So you end up with two and two thirds. Okay? So, um,. That is about, um, and then we'll just go ahead and write this down just so that you'll see that this two thirds times four over one or two thirds times four equals two and two thirds. Um, guys, I, I can't express enough the importance of um, knowing your multiplication facts. Um, that's something that uh, uh, the teachers expect you to know by now being in the sixth grade. Um, the only way you're going to learn those is to learn them at home. If you don't have homework, you can always practice your multiplication numbers. Um, the teachers are busy teaching skills such as multiplying fractions, dividing fractions. You might be converting ounces to cut. I don't, it, a wide variety of assignments. Um, they don't have time to go back and teach you the basics of how to multiply. You know, I, I don't want to sound mean about it, but I do want to stress the importance um, of knowing the basic multiplication facts. Um, if you find them extremely difficult, just try to memorize two a day. And before long, you'll have them all figured out and it'll make life for you in math so much easier. Um, if you have any other questions or any comments, um, uh, just be sure and send me a message. Um, if not, you guys have a good day. I'll see you at school and um, study those math facts. We'll see you at school. Bye.